Hey everybody, Scott Carson here from the Note Closure Show podcast. Uh, I'm the CEO of WeCloseNotes.com and I've been podcasting for about 19 months, but I had a lot of people come to me and ask me to share how we are able to dis- distribute the Note Closure Show across so many channels uh, without having such a huge staff or huge overhead when it comes to our podcast. And so I'm, uh, this is long already about a month overdue, but uh, I've been working on this. We actually had a presentation at uh, PodFest Multimedia Expo in Orlando just a few months back, thanks to uh, Chris Kremosis and my uh, co-presented time, Tom Hazard, uh, with Poditize. And so what I thought, I tweaked that presentation to give you guys more insight and a step-by-step kind of basis of exactly what we do and how we are able to distribute our podcast across multiple channels, um, basically kind of from doing one thing. So you're going to want to grab a piece of paper and a pen or something like that. Take some notes. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long, maybe 20, 30 minute video for you guys to go through kind of what we do. So let me share my screen because I did put a, a kind of a quick PowerPoint together for you guys to kind of help follow along there for you. So um, like I said, my podcast, the No Close Show podcast, uh, we are a very, very niche podcast and I'll get to the reason why we're a niche podcast. Uh, but like I said, CEO of WeCloseNotes.com, that's my website. I'm an active real estate investor and educator since 2002. Uh, we focus on buying distressed mortgages and debt is our, our main full-time thing. That's what I've been doing since 2008. Uh, is buying debt, you know, creating owner finance mortgages or buying debt from banks, especially after all the, the big downturn. So I'm one of just a few people in the country that's been teaching or does teach this niche aspect of, <clears throat> of real estate investing. Um, I've been doing it for a while. It's, like I said, there's maybe 10, 15,000, maybe 20,000 total note and real estate investors in the country that are doing what I'm doing. Uh, there are some bigger firms, but I've used the podcast here to kind of help me do a deep dive into that niche aspect of things. But I, like I said, I've been using video to market myself since 2009. I first started off with testimonial videos or using a little flip camera. Uh, the Dell flip camera was really great, really easy to use, whether it was me doing a testimonial video with my students or walking around a property or doing something else. So big believer in video because I believe like uh, you probably heard me say before, we're in the media business. We're all media companies. And if you choose not to do video, you're really setting yourself back uh, 50% on what your podcast or what your show can get out to. A lot of people love video. That's where everything's going with Facebook and YouTube and uh, Instagram and Twitter. Everybody's adding video and it's either you embrace it or you kind of get left in the dust for the most part. So, but what we're going to talk about, what I'll be sharing with you guys and gals, I'll talk about how we use Zoom. Uh, .us is the best for our prop, uh, podcast. Uh, how we use our production company and how they save us time and money. We'll talk about how we use LiveLeap.com actually to social share across all our Facebook uh, pages and groups that we actually own and run with what we do. Uh, we'll talk about how we use Repurpose.io to save time and upload. Um, once we've shared a video to Facebook, how we upload that directly to YouTube at a fraction of the download time and upload time. And then we'll also share how we use Buffer to expand our our social media reach after the fact. And then uh, we'll also kind of, hopefully this provides kind of a blueprint for distribution for what we do. And if you want to run with it, great. You can run with it. If not, maybe implement a few things from it. Hopefully this is a valuable video for you. But anyway, uh, in all truthness, I did not want to start a podcast. I honestly did not want to start a podcast. I started doing Facebook lives. (laughs) Uh, for a while now. As I said, I've been buying debt since 2008. I've been teaching it since 2010. I've been doing a lot of webinars, okay? As I mentioned, a very small niche of people out there. I was like, oh, how am I going to reach people, right? Um, <clears throat> but I've been doing regular webinars almost every Monday night via Zoom as our channel for that. And yeah, I use go to webinar. I mean, I, like I said, I've been doing webinars so, since, since 2011, just webinars alone. I start off using GoToWebinar. I like going to Zoom because it allows for me to record it. And also, a couple cool features is if you pay for the upgraded version, I have a pro account with Zoom, but if you also add the, I think, Webinar 500 series to it, it allows for the option to live stream straight to YouTube or Facebook or Facebook Workplace if you want to do that. Uh, But before getting to that, before I started the podcast, uh, I started doing Facebook Lives back November 1st, 2016. It was just my way, straight from my cell phone, nothing fancy, just my iPhone doing selfies basically. Videos like eight minutes to 20 minutes long. It was just the idea to share a day in life. What's going on with Scott Carson? 
you know, what, what are we working on today? Little simple things. It wasn't bringing guests on. It was just teaching a little bit of a nugget or what was on our plate. Um, but, you know, that's where the name of the note closer show kind of came from was just kind of, Hey, we're just going to share what we're up to today in our neck of the woods, our way to get in front of our tribe. Okay. And I, there's a ton of videos out there. Um, you know, people are familiar with our background here, as you can see behind me. Um, I don't have a big office or a big studio. This is actually my office that I work out of, but we do videos. I got a lot of videos. Every time we do a webinar, we'd upload it. Every time we teach a class, we would use Zoom to record it and then upload it as a private uh, video on either Vimeo or YouTube and share that to our audience as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, my buddy Tom Hazard, who is the uh, chief, I, I guess you say bottle washer, jack of all trades, Tom Hazard with potatize.com. Uh, he produces our podcast, produces a lot of other podcasts as well. It came to me. We met through mutual friends. Um, my, my other friend, Aaron Young, I had a podcast with him. We met at an event. And he's like, oh, you do all this great content. You should start a podcast. And I'm like many people. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do all those hours of audio editing. You know, I don't want to do that. I heard nothing. But I don't want to spend time. Not really technologically savvy when it comes to editing. I just, I like to record it and throw it up there. Even if I screw up, I don't like to edit those out. I don't want to do all this work. I got to get this extra computer or another thing. And he's like, no, no, no. If you're using Zoom, you can just send the links to us. You can just upload the audio or upload the video and we'll do the rest, which is really great. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I put it off a little bit, but like I said, my time is pretty valuable. I didn't want to do a lot of extra work to add something new. That's the last thing I needed was something new on my plate. Well, I was wrong. Tom proved me wrong. So we decided when Tom told me that uh, they could do what they did, I was like, great, awesome. Let's start a podcast. Then. That's all you got to do. That's easy. You can do the work. You can get uploaded to iTunes and everywhere else and use some other fun stuff. Great. We'll dive into that. So I decided to go ahead. We'll just launch it. August 21st, 2017 was when the first episode went live. I record my regular episode either via Zoom or sometimes Facebook Live. I have toyed around with BeLive.tv, but uh, for simplicity and to make it simple so it works all the time because BeLive is great, but it doesn't give me a really, I have to download the, the Facebook file, which takes forever. So I like what Zoom because I'm able to have the same link for all my guests, same link for my shows. I can just set it up in my calendar and it repeats the same thing. It makes it a lot easier. Now, it's for some weird reason, I'm away from my computer. I can still jump on my phone and do a Facebook Live, which I have from the beach or other places I've been. I'll just still use my camera on my phone and, and do a quick Facebook Live. But usually it's through zoom.us. I do the video. And uh, I then, once I do the video, if I use Zoom, it gives me either the video link or just the audio link. It separates the two off. So then I just upload uh, the link or the file to the Podetize platform. And I'll kind of show you how that works and what we do with that, because I think it's just a phenomenal service. So I'm a big raving fan of them. And they do all the work, you know? I take the video, upload the link there. Um, Tom's team does all the production and distribution for the most part across all the podcast platforms so that uh, it goes across, obviously, to iTunes. It's also uploaded to the Podetize platform. They upload it to my website, all right? iHeartRadio, Spotify, Player FM, TuneIn, Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Blueberry, Google Play, Android, Apple, Google Podcasts, all those things, and there's more that aren't even on there. So they're constantly adding new podcast platforms that we can easily distribute it across the board. So that's a beautiful thing. I don't have to do any of that. Basically, I, I record the, my episode, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, and then I upload the link to the platform. I'll show that in a second here. But then what they do is, is really kind of a cool thing. So take the video, and then, of course, if I'm doing a Facebook Live, I may we'll upload it to YouTube, and I'll show you how we do that with repurpose.io. Really great, great service, but I don't have to worry about downloading the episode, waiting for that to download from Facebook, then re-uploading and doing so. With repurpose, I can set up automatic <clears throat> uh, keywords. I can go in and have things already preloaded. That way, all I've got to do is change a couple things and go from there. Uh, what I also use, though, is I love using Live Leap, which I'll dive into that later. Uh, Live Leap will then allow me to distribute it across the board to Facebook as well, uh, or different Facebook groups. It notifies LinkedIn that I'm going live. It also notifies Twitter that I'm going live. So that's a really great thing. Not just one page, but I can pick which Facebook pages that I own 
to go in there. And then I also have a bunch of different Facebook groups uh, in different cities that we've created to get the word out to our local audience and things like that. And I'll share that with you as well. So there's also more. Um, what's really great, I think, even though Google has announced that they're starting to transcribe audio episodes to help with the search engine just on their platform, um, Podetize actually goes out and transcribes my whole episode, not show notes, but whole episode, a whole hour long into a blog and they post my website and I'll show you what they do. Um, this helps me boost my SEO on my website dramatically. All right, with web, uh, website and keyword ranking. Literally, I rank, I've gone from ranking on a few to ranking really high, and I'll share that with you in a minute. Uh, it taken my keywords that I rank for from just 175 when I first started on August 21st to now ranking in the first pages to 2,200 keyword terms, which is really cool. And so I'm getting roughly at least 9,000 plus monthly unique visitors to my website off the SEO side of things which is really, so it's driving a lot of traffic as people are searching for different keywords. When you have a lot of different blogs, different episodes, great, it really helps out there versus just the show notes. So there, I get ranked for things that wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, but, I, you know, we get 3,000 plus that directly from just the Google searches. It's a beautiful thing uh, having that traffic come in. And uh, what's kind of funny is my website, weclosenotes.com, ranks higher for some very important keywords than higher than most of my vendors. Uh, most of the vendors that we use on a regular basis love us because we do feed a lot of business to them, but we rank higher than they do in a lot of cases, which is kind of a funny thing because um, they have a website, but it shows you the power when you're posting and creating content for using the full transcription. You get the Google juice, the searchability, than somebody who just has a stagnant website that's not creating other types of content. So that's really kind of a cool thing. Um, one of the nice things too is I think we all want our guests to share their stuff to help get uh, share to their audiences. And my show is 50% me talking with investors, vendors, people in my niche field. And then also 50% of me doing topics I'm doing like a topic like this or a topic on a specific niche. Okay. So I think one of the, the, the powerful things is always trying to get that. And it's not in your best interest to go back and find all the links or to create a, a custom image. I know a lot of people like audiograms and things like that, or we'll create something, take time to do that. I'll do that a little bit and I'll show you some things that we do for that. But most of the time, what I love, if I don't get around to it, is when my episode goes live, um, Podetize actually sends an email out to my guests. As long as I upload their email and contact information to the platform, they actually share, send an email that gives all the links and actually some images, some custom images that my guests can then re reuse across their social media platforms. We've done all the work for them. All they got to do is hit share or download it. And then up, you know, share it to Facebook, Twitter, wherever they want to. And it's, they call it ego bait. It, it, you know, we take a quote out of it, make them look smart, and go from there. And so you can see, here's an example of one, uh, buddy Dave Perchin. We pulled a quote from the podcast. Or I didn't, we potatized it. Their team did it for me. Here's another one with my buddy Aaron Young. They pull that, they send it all out to them. It's beautiful. They're sharing it across their social media, and it's driving uh, traffic back to our website and our podcast as well. Um, we've really leveraged some of these things to help us with our monetization. Um, they host the actual podcast. I don't pay Lisbon or anybody else to host it. Podetize actually hosts my podcast. Uh, and it's got the ability for me to plug and play evergreen ads in. So if I have, I'll give you an example, uh, Quest IRAs or Quest Trust Company is one of our sponsors. They have different events. So each month we swap out their ad to reflect the most recent event going on, whether it's a boot camp or a workshop or something that's going on that month. So if somebody's listening to episode 150, they'll hear an updated ad versus something that was, you know, a year ago. You know, so they hear something that's evergreen. I can swap it out. I can run short-term ad play, like 90 days for people. Um, hey, you're going to get these episodes and we're going to put ads in across those 90 days. Yet, you know, different, different ad each month. So as listeners are listening to our podcast on iTunes and other podcast platforms, gives them the opportunity to really hear about new stuff that's going on. It sounds fresh. It doesn't sound stagnant. It, it's a really great thing. Uh, we were able to basically add four sponsors at at least a thousand dollars a month. And if you figure that times a 12 month basis, that's 48 grand there. You know, we, uh, with us doing a lot of episodes, we, we were doing four to five episodes a week in our first year, we averaged three and a half episodes a week. So it gives us a lot of content. So what we've done with our sponsors is each month they get one episode that's dedicated to them where they want to talk about to our audience. 
Now I'm, I'm picky. I want to make sure that my sponsors jive with my audience. You know, and we're not selling essential oils to a real estate investing thing. So it's also nice that in real estate and finance, they're often paying uh, higher than like a, a cost per click or cost per thousand which is kind of normal for other places. We charge them either a thousand the first year he got goes second. Once they've gone to the second year, it boosts to 1500 and then goes up from there, depending on our downloads as our downloads grow on average. Um, we're also able to add affiliate sponsors. Sometimes we'll have guests on that have a workshop or something. So we can able to plug them in and then that helps us monetize that as well. Cause if we sell a ticket, we get 50% off that ticket, the boot camp. Uh, through our plug and play ads on current events, not something that was six months ago, it's stuck in there, which is really nice. And then we'll also, as we have some different guests on, we'll also offer up in the individual episode sponsors. I have to give a shout out to uh, Doug Sandler and, and Strickland Bonner from the uh, Nice Guys on Business podcast. They do this. I really like that. And also Warren, uh, Joseph Warren from your first uh, 100K podcast. I saw that as a guest and something I was like, oh, that's awesome. Let's implement that as well. But it helps with the ego bait because we do have a pretty large audience. Um, I've been lucky enough that we've grown our LinkedIn uh, profiles. Uh, my LinkedIn connection is about 16,000. I've got 35,000 on my business page on Facebook, 5,000 on my personal page, just under 10,000 on Twitter. And then we've got a large email database, which also helps us with our distribution. Uh, and those numbers have grown quite a bit in the last two years because of the podcast. Um, we also uh, offered up a, uh, membership to our students at $97 a month where they get different swag. Whereas we have guests on the show, they'll often have books that they'll give us books, you know, their latest book or thing like that, that we'll ship that out monthly with a t-shirt and either books or swag, or maybe a backpack or a hat or it depends on what's going on. But at $97 a month, that's been really nice to have a bunch of people that sign up for that. And basically it's generating, um, it varies a little bit as, you know, people stay on or they unsubscribe or, or, stay on, but most of the people, we're still lucky to see that we've got 75, 80% of our people that signed on in March of last year are still members of the day paying us $97 a month. And then stuff that we sent out usually costs us less than 30 bucks uh, in shipping and costs for the most part. So it's a, a nice little revenue model for our, our podcast. If you'd like more information about that, glad to share that with you guys. But basically we are able to generate uh, through our sponsors and affiliates and our memberships over a hundred thousand dollars a year in incoming income off of our podcast and what we do. I like to focus on monetization. I don't want to focus on a lot of the editing and things like that. So that's why we like the potty tie. So give you some numbers here real fast. Our first 12 months, we did 175 episodes. We had 156,000 downloads, 22,000 YouTube views, because we would just upload the video to YouTube. We really didn't do much besides just uploading it the first year. Um, we used Vimeo.com as another video storage space, because if you ever get an account shut down like I've had in the past, my YouTube account's been shut down in the past, you lose a lot of videos. So we store both our videos on there and it helps with extra views. Um, and then we also go back and track because we do live stream the video straight to Facebook Live. And so in our first 12 months, we had 75,000 Facebook views across uh, the different 100 and roughly about 160 episodes that actually went live on Facebook, which is pretty nice. So you can see the numbers here over the first 12 months, we did have one big spike of like 6,600 downloads in a day and a couple episodes. I think we went big in German. You can call me the, uh, uh, the Hoff of uh, note podcasts in Germany or something like that. But um, our first year, 70 plus countries, uh, really nice chunk of things. But the thing is, if we didn't do video, I want to bring this back. If we didn't do video, we would not have had an additional 125,000 basically views or downloads. If we just did the audio, yeah, we would have probably had, well, I know we would have had less than 156,000 downloads because I know people come across us on YouTube and Vimeo and also Facebook and they've learned about our show from there and then they become a podcast listener as they're traveling. So that's something to think about. If you're not using video, please, please start doing it. It will double your audience and we've got the proof to prove it. Now, we've now been doing this for 19 months now. We're not 270,000 plus downloads, just shy of 275,000 as of today. 433 episodes. Um, yeah, we crank them out a lot. Uh, we've got over doubled our download view on YouTube, over 50,000 plus. Vimeo has also over doubled that to 58 plus thousand. Okay. And now we've doubled our audience in the last uh, seven months on the Facebook live views because people are going back and listening 
and it's growing an audience. So it's really, that's really strong numbers, especially if you're gonna reach, be reaching out to vendors and sponsors. Hey, here's some numbers that we have. And that's led to some, some cool things. Um, through one of our podcasting relationships, he saw what we were doing, he approached us, and now we're pretty lucky to now be in 16 AM, FM radio stations across the country uh, every 9 a, at 9 a.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we're seeing, uh, we just finished our first month with them, seeing uh, 72,000 plus views on their online uh, channels each day, roughly. Like I said, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 a.m. on the East Coast and 9 a.m. on the West Coast and across these channels. So that's pretty exciting. It's another, you figure that another 210,000 views a month on that, it's boosted our numbers to almost a million in our first month of listeners on the episodes. Pretty freaking cool on that. But that came because I had a, a fellow podcasters in radio, saw what we were doing and approached me and said, hey, I think you'd be great for this and it's, it's been well worth it. We're already starting to see people contact us. Uh, it's not live episodes. We record the episode and then go from there and upload to them. And then they play it the next day or, or, or week out, depending on how many episodes we upload to them. So well worth it, just expanding the market. Now, let's go through the websites that we're going to dive through with you a little bit. Like I said, I'll talk a little bit about our, the production dashboard that makes it easy for us to upload things through Podetize. I'll go through uh, how that kind of affects into weclosenotes.com. We'll talk then about liveleap.com repurpose.io and then also kind of what we do here because I do have a marketing person that helps us out with our real estate side that works full time for me. Um, she then takes a lot of the images and videos that we do and then redistributes them across buffer.com and, and some of the other websites. Okay. Uh, here's my contact information. I'll come back to that in a second, but you may want to take, jot this down as we dive in some of the websites. So let me uh, do a new share here real fast. I, I love zoom. All right. Now, the thing with Zoom, I don't know if it'll let me share this with you. Uh, let me see if it'll let me. Probably not. So let me do this. I'm going to stop the share. All right. Now, with Zoom, what I see now on Zoom is I have a control panel down at the bottom of my screen. You probably can't see it because uh, this is the thing. So what it has is it allows for me to see number. When, if you're on a webinar with Zoom, you'll see participants, Q&A, You'll also see I can launch a poll to listeners that they're actually in on my webinar here. I can share my screen. There's a chat roll of five people that are live. A pause where I can either record it to a cloud or record it to my computer. With the, once I've finished stop recording, it'll upload it there. And then there's three little dots that say more. And then when you click on the three little dots, it says go live on Facebook, uh, live on Workplace by Facebook, or live on YouTube. So I'm gonna try to see if it'll allow me to share my live on Facebook screen here. So live on there. Let me go back and see if I can't share my screen. It does. Okay, so once I hit live on Facebook, here's what pops up. Choose where you want to post your live video. So I will hit either share on my timeline, share on a friend's timeline, share in a group, share in an event, or share on a page that you manage. Now, if I share my timeline, that goes to my personal page. And I got 5,000 people, which is great on there. Okay. So let's just do that. So I'll hit next, my personal page, and I'll show you what it looks like with the business page too. Very live streaming. Hopefully Facebook isn't having an algorithm change. They do from time to time where it, does, it takes a little while for it to upload. Well, they gotta, Zoom gotta go back and reconnect them to get it to fix. It would be my luck to have him doing that again today. Now, one of the things too with me doing video, I have a better internet connection than most people. Uh, I actually pay for separate internet than what they offer here at my office. Um, let's stop this here real fast. Try a different route. I think it's, yeah, it's Facebook's having an issue today. Give me a second here. <laughs> All right, so let's try this one more time. Got to love recording. So, I uh, know, will I go back and edit that out? No, I won't because you, got, you need to know what you got to do, right? So, let's hit stop live stream. You can see up the left hand corner, it would have said preparing to stop. It tells me up at the top of your Zoom recording or not recording on the top. Uh, Top left hand side of your screen, you may not see it. 
Um, and I said, let's try this again. So I'll click more. I'll just go live on, I should do live on YouTube really fast. That'd be the easiest thing. YouTube's always working. So make sure I share my screen. All right, so once I hit share to YouTube, this pulls it up. I have a couple of different accounts. I click on my business account. I pick my YouTube notes and it goes over here. Broadcast Zoom webinar to YouTube live. And I'm gonna just say sample webinar. I can make it public or private or unlisted. Um, I'm just gonna say private right now. If I wanted to, if I can make it public, totally great. Actually, let's do public. Just, you may never know who's gonna pop in there, okay? I can change the title, podcast distribution, and it go live. And you'll see preparing a live stream, the webinar. Now it's great as I'm using Zoom to do this, I can click out of my Zoom kind of portal and look, go straight to Facebook and see Facebook pop up. So as people ask questions, they go from there. So now, let's make sure you can still see it. Yep, you see it. So this is the Facebook aspect of it. This is what people are seeing. They press the play. And now what's great is here, people are asking questions and going from there, which is awesome. They want to share it. Great, good stuff. You know, play here, you'll see. There you go. And it's live. And it goes out to my followers. So I've got like 1,800 followers uh, on YouTube that say, oh, hey, they just got to know Scott Carson's going live with a video, which is great. So if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, do me a favor and give me a comment on the YouTube thing as we're using this. We'll come back to it in a second. Now, the nice thing is if I go back into and I hit stop share, stop sharing my screen, it gives me the option, you may not see this, it says up here, webinar is now live, now live streaming live on YouTube. I, it gives me a drop down if I want to. I can stop the live stream, view the stream on YouTube, or I can copy the streaming link. So if Facebook is ever having an issue, I can copy the streaming link, click over to Facebook really fast, and put a post to copy the streaming link, and so it'll show there. I'll give you an example of that later on. But pretty easy to use with that aspect of now it's uploading straight to YouTube. It's awesome. I don't have to do anything, it's also recording the video, so I'll have a file to share when I'm done that I can upload that as well. So while this is uploading, let me go back into Zoom here and share a couple things with you here. So I'll just jump over to Zoom. Share my screen. There you go. I'll put in my account. Now you can see here, I've got a Zoom account here, webinar 500, meetings for 100 panelists, and I got 500 people plus up in, in a webinar, which is nice. But the thing I like is once I've hit recording, it says my recordings here. So I'll click on here. It tells me all the other things. So I can see like this sample webinar is recorded right now. But here's, like I did a, a podcast episode with my buddy Mark Music. You can see here, two files. Here's the link, I click on the link. Gives me the option to either do a download of the screen, the shared screen with speaker view, so to show Mark and me talking. I can download that video and send it to somebody else. Either a download link or I can delete it, or if I just want to upload the audio to my podcast production uh, website at Podetize, I can just take the link and hit download that, save it in Dropbox, which I'll need that for that, or I can just use the link. And when I uh, send it out to like the radio station, they do the upload that, I just send them the link to the audio. They run with the audio and do all that stuff, which is kind of nice. So it kind of simplifies that for it. Very simple. I can hit download and then upload it to Vimeo, which I have to do. Um, or I can just, like I said, upload it to Dropbox and go from there. But if I'm sharing to Facebook, which is pretty cool, that's where the next thing comes in. But what's nice is, it, you know, when I look at my recordings here, it allows me to share stuff. You can see I've used a couple different podcasts on here. This is why I like Zoom, because I can go back in and it allows for you too to do the audio tracks. So if you have two people want to do an audio track for me, an audio track for Mark with just a click of a button or two. But this, I love Zoom, easy to use, pretty uh, effective and affordable for what you're doing here. So let's go back here and take a look at YouTube really fast again. So stop the share. All right. And I stop my thing here. Okay, click on that. Let's go back and share. You share again. 
to YouTube. YouTube's rocking and rolling. There are two people watching me do this on YouTube right now. Awesome, good stuff. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. It's there, rocking and rolling. No comments, but that's okay. Thanks for watching YouTube people, whoever that is. Okay. Now I can go back in here and hit stop the live stream. It's no longer live streaming to YouTube. I just stopped it. Okay. Let me share my video again. Once again, it still shows me recording up in my right hand corner up here, but no longer a live stream and stuff like that. So let's see if we can't get this thing to live stream to Facebook today. Okay. So go to live on Facebook. Is where you want to post your video. Let's try my business page now. Share in a page you manage. And that pops up all the different pages that I manage, whether it's my inverse investments, my note camp, podcast day, podcast beeps, or Scott Carson business page, or my social media day that I do. So I'll click on Scott Carson, posting in Scott Carson, hit next. And this will post to my business Facebook page, which I've got a bigger audience of uh, 35,000 followers on there, which is really nice. I built that over uh, several years of growing an audience and different events I go in and asking people to like and share. I may have too much open. It's acting strange today. I'm probably be working later. But anyway, so we'll go back here. <laughs> I can still show you what it does. Stop. Okay. So the great thing is when I do upload it, let me just pull up Facebook anyway. So let me show you guys an example here. All right, so I just clicked on my Facebook. This is my personal profile. If I go over to my business profile, you'll see some of the things that we did yesterday. So go over to Scott Carson here. So here's my business page and you can see basically when I hit yesterday afternoon, I did my episodes, it uploaded it straight as a video. So we'll scroll down here to our videos. And here's one that I did yesterday, Total Transformation of Mark Music. About 190 views on my YouTube, or not my YouTube, my video account. But the thing is really nice here, if you look here, 190 views is great. Uh, we've got our buddy, I picked the, the title, and uh, when you saw that black screen as Facebook was trying to upload it with Zoom, it allowed for me to pick the title. It popped up here, so I picked the title of the episode, and then I put a little brief description on where we got our buddy and good friend, Mark Music on to talk about this. And then it also allows for me to pick, if I'm using the business uh, profile, it allows for me to pick some keywords. So like I pick real estate investing, because that's one of the big keywords that we use, or real estate. So that's a keyword that helps drive traffic in the business page. Now, if I'm sharing it to my personal page, it won't allow me to pick the keyword, but I'll still be able to rest, enter the rest of this one. Now, the nice thing, is we talked about Lively a few minutes ago, Lively recognizes that I did a Facebook Live, whether I'm live streaming, sharing it via Zoom or doing it on my phone here, and it automatically will share. So you can see here, it automatically shared it to NoteCamp, it automatically shared it to my personal page, it shared it to the Note Closer Show podcast as well. It short, sh uh, sh uh, shared it to Inverse Investments. Okay, so I automatically shared it to those uh, five websites or five Facebook pages, which is great. It means I don't have to go back and share, share, share. All right. So let me give you an example. So if we go here, let me just click on. Let me just pick up uh, the podcast page. And we got different people that saw there. So we had 20 people there, 111 on my page, five or six, gives me that stuff there. Uh, you see Gail, see, shared via Lively right there. 
Right. Now, what I love, Live Leap, as we kind of transition into that, I've already got Live Leap open here. So liveleap.com. Uh, I can log in with my Facebook account. Live Leap allows for me to set up things for it to automatically share, which is really great. You see a dashboard, you can add a route in Facebook Manager, stuff like that. So here's really good. What's what I like is, is the Facebook route manager. I click on here, and so it's, I create a podcast route. And so anytime I do either my personal page, okay, or my four business pages, it will then automatically share it to my four Facebook groups. I have 42, I'm sorry, four Facebook pages. So if I did for my personal, I'll share it to those four. If I did it from any of these four, it'll share it again to these four. It'll share then the 42 Facebook groups. It'll also share it to my Twitter account. and also share it to my LinkedIn account. And then if I want to upload an email list, which I've done before, or an SMS list, it'll automatically share to those lists. So let's just go through that real fast so you can see how to set this up. Lively, inexpensive. So I'm going to name it, okay? Um, I'm going to say, do you want to share the live videos that you publish from your personal profile? Yes, I do, Green. Which Facebook pages would you like to share your live videos from? Well, if I do one live on the No Closer Show, obviously, or my business page, social media day, those three are the biggest ones we're working on right now. Great, I'll share it. Okay, in use indicates the pages that are already. Do I want to allow pre-recorded videos to syndicate or auto-share? So this is another thing. If you like to use Restream, you could use Restream to upload and pre-schedule 30-minute videos that would share it to Facebook. And it's asking here, I say yes. So if I'm uploading from Restream, and I'll make post while I'm traveling or on vacation or somewhere, Live Leap will recognize that it's a pre-recorded video and it'll syndicate it as well across these platforms. So we pick where we want to share it from, the name, and that takes us to the next thing. Okay, you pick which videos to come from and now which video, which websites, which Facebook groups do you want to share it to? So I want to share it to my Facebook page, great. And then I've got a, face, a lot of Facebook pages, okay? Uh, sorry, groups, not pages, sorry. So I've got a bunch of different groups. A lot of these are little groups that we've done for our individual markets because we um, try to use Facebook groups for Facebook to auto-generate our tribe in different cities. So we picked our top 40, 50 markets and created a, a Facebook group. And we get one, two, three, four people that uh, will opt in those Facebook groups every, you know, every month. It's a slow grow, but the beautiful thing is we auto-share it to those groups. Okay. I also have a private group for just my students, the WCN crew, which has about a thousand students in it. And I want to share it there. So they see the podcast episode. If they're not uh, on my personal page or they're not on my business page, they still are able to, we're able to get in front of Yes. Do they see it maybe multiple times across my birth? If they're following me on my business page, my personal page. Yes, they do. doesn't matter. Nobody complains because as long as we're giving good content, it helps out there. But literally uh, it's easy. So they, you know, we say we pick which ones live videos come from, which pages to share it to, which grapes to share it, I mean grapes, groups to share it to, and then hit next. And then it shares it to my personal Twitter account, okay, which is great. And I'll show you that in a second here. So let me, uh, let me pull this up here. So when I have Twitter, I'll show you what it shows to, shows to Twitter. Okay, so I got a lot of tweets here, obviously, because we're sharing a lot. So when I go live, we've posted some things there, shared as people tagged us quite a bit lately. You can see here, I am currently going live at facebook.com slash one Scott Carson. All right. And if they see that in their thread, they click on the link and it takes them over to the live stream that I did on Facebook yesterday. Pretty freaking cool what I did with this one. Was another one that I did with Mark, well, one with Mark Music yesterday. So it takes them straight to the link, which is pretty cool. And if it's live, it's live. If it's not, they catch the recording of it. Pretty freaking cool, right? Same thing, share to this LinkedIn account. So it shares my business LinkedIn account. So let me go over here to LinkedIn. And this has helped me grow my LinkedIn profile quite a bit. Almost doubled my numbers in the last year, year and a half, because I used to have 6,000. Um, connections on LinkedIn, we've grown that to just south of 16,000. And so let me just go down and click on my profile here. You can see some of the things that it shares it to. See all activity. You 
you know, we've posted some quotes from our thing is another great thing to do um, for content is taking and, and screen saving uh, the review on iTunes. And then we just put, we use Instagrams. Uh, what do I use? A grid to create that with my logo. And then the uh, review, which is great. You know, we did that. We take a, take the image from Facebook, from the Facebook live, same thing. We use uh, Instagram gridlock. Is it gridlock? Hang on here. It's got different grids. I can tell you that really fast that we use. Photo grid, sorry. Use photo grid. On, it's an app. Allows for you to change different grids, but it makes it look pretty nice. Really simple. Screenshot from my phone. See other people that have been tagged in their stuff for meeting last night. And so it does the same thing. Gives you a link to where they were going live. We just have had a lot in the last 24 hours of being tagged. Here's another quote. Come on. Here, let me just do this. It might be easier to just do. Uh, Scott Carson is going live. Oh, people. Just did this a few minutes ago and it pulled up. That's not right. Anyway. But it gives me the same thing similar to what Twitter did. Just showed you. Basically, a link, hey, you're going live. It pops up. They click on it. takes them to Facebook Live with the Facebook recorded video. So it's kind of a cool thing with LinkedIn. But that's the, that's the beauty about Live Leap is it allows you to do that to Twitter. And then if you also want to upload a text uh, SMS list, it'll send a text message out to them. You have to have a separate service um, integrated in through Live Leap for that. And the same thing if you want to send an email blast out. They'll use Active Campaign to send that out there, too. And then last but not least, if you want to, you can set it up to have live web notifications on any of the websites that you want to with your API. Say, hey, it automatically will show on your website that you're live or do a webhook integration as well. I have not set that up. Uh, but anyway, that's it. That's how you set up Live Leap so that it now, like I said, do a live video from my personal page. It then shares it to four business pages, 42 Facebook groups, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn account. And if you want to, at an email or an SMS. So that's really the beautiful thing about Live Leap, okay? Live Leap automatically does it once you set it up. It adds a lot of great, gets it out across the board so you're adding more people to eyes. Yes, it's video. Yes, it's not a podcast. It's your podcast recording, but a lot of people like watching video versus listening right now because I have a little bit older demographic for in real estate than uh, they, they don't always listen to podcasts, but they like the video aspect and they love, they spend time on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, um, you know, so they can grab stuff as well there. So that's a, that's a nice thing to get it out there. Now repurpose.io is a phenomenal tool that we talked about as well. That when you have this, you can set up, let me just log in here. It's cheap. I think 20 bucks a month, 12 or 20 bucks a month. It's not difficult. So I have different YouTube. I also use the binge networks, um, but we'll talk about. So I'll give you an example. Like I have my podcast workflow. All right. And I, go, I set up uh, the name of it and then where I'm going to, you know, where it's going to recognize the videos from and where is it going to put it through. So once I basically set this up, I can hit view videos. And you can see here, it'll recognize, it'll link to my Facebook page. And they see, oh, hey, you did. You did, a, you did a, a live video, a live Facebook video with Wealth Without Wall Street. This is one of my podcast episodes I did uh, two days ago. All right. And you see the video that it pulled off of YouTube there. So I can hit publish this. It takes it off. It automatically pulls the title and the short description that I typed into Facebook when I was connecting Zoom to the Facebook Live. Okay. Wealth Without Wall Street. You know, we've got Joey and Russ put on there. Well, I'll go back here as well and just add in my website. Which is great, put a description down there. And I'll come back to that later on. Now I have my keywords that are automatically uploaded that I typed in here. And if I want to, if I had a custom YouTube thumbnail already created, we could put that in there right now, which is great. Uh, but this is what it is. And then basically I hit publish now and basically it's uploading. It takes a little while. It's uploaded to YouTube. I don't have to worry about going and doing anything and downloading it from Facebook and taking 30 minutes to an hour and then re-uploading to YouTube and re mailing. That's automatically basically done for the most part. Now, I will go back and change two things on the YouTube video in just a few minutes, and I'll share that with you 
here after that. But so we've talked about using Zoom. Okay. So we want to go back here. Talk about using Zoom. All right. I'm bringing this back up to my PowerPoint side. We'll go to the podcast in a little set and we'll also dive into we close notes, but we talk about liveleap.com, repurpose.io, and we showed you how we use Zoom to live stream to Facebook or YouTube, right, everybody? So here's the thing. Now that we did the Facebook Live and it's working, well, how do I get it on iTunes and Stitcher and all that great stuff, right? So let's go there next. So what I do next is I will then go over to our production team. Here's Podetize once I've logged in, podetize.com. And when I log in, it gives me this dashboard. You can see 273,000 views, uh, 190 in unique ones, total plays last 90 days. If I want to um, upload a new episode, I click on uh, upload episodes. I buy them in basically 25 ch uh, episode chunks. But it's, the beautiful thing is here, I can go in here and edit it. So let's click on the request details. So I can just one 432 the power of a note mastermind. I haven't uploaded the last couple of days. I'll get around to it. it takes them about six to seven days to get an episode, but here's what it is. So let's hit edit for resubmission. So, so you can see exactly if I'm uploading a new one, here's what it's gonna ask. What's the episode number, episode, you know, episode number, the power of the mastermind, when I wanna shoot to have that publicized, if I have a subtitle, if I wanna create a feature image, great. I don't have to. I can put in a short description here. Um, I will put a little bit, but what's great a lot of times is the production crew at Podetize, as they're transcribing the episode, they'll actually come up with usually a better episode description than what I would put in there. So they'll actually go in and do that for me, okay? If I wanna edit some notes, like, hey, put a break in here, we had power go out or something like that, I can put the, the notes in there as well. Um, like I said, I upload the audio file that I download from Zoom, I put it into Dropbox, which is a very easy thing, and then just choose from my Dropbox file the audio for it. If I have a guest on that day, I put their quick bio in there, I would highly recommend you use Calendly when you're doing booking podcast up as uh, guests and then actually add, tweak it a little bit so they give their name, their social handles, and then they can literally upload their bio straight to it. But their first name, last name, their email address, uh, their headshot, and I'll show why that in a second here. And if I have a second guest or two on there, I'll do that. Uh, any websites that I want to do for backlinks, we'll put their website in there or any other um, hashtags, if they've got any hashtags I thought were valuable along the way or any other links, I can put this in there as well. And then I just hit submit. And six to seven days later, Podetize works their magic. They upload it to all, like I said, all the podcasting platforms, um, but they do, oh, come on. But they do, and it, it was a great thing, you're gonna like this too, they go to it, but then I can go back here and go back to my dashboard to see how each episode is doing uniquely. I can also see how many I've done for the day or for the month for tracking. Close some of these things down a little bit. We don't need these up anymore. Go back to my dashboard. They're constantly updating it with different things. So you can see here, like I said, last 90 days, I can change the route, hit more analytics so I can see that in, let's just say since it's April, first part of April, just from the first through where we're at today. Go. And it'll show me how I'm done so far for April. I think we're at like 1400s. And the beautiful thing is I like what they're constantly updating this web. So I've got so far for April, I've got 1,500 downloads, unique place 13, and it tells me how many countries that people, so 15 countries have downloaded it, the podcast players, the platforms, it's telling me how we're ranking um, as far as organic keywords or the time frame. We also link into SEM Rush. They do, Podetize does, so they tell me how I rank with backlinks and things like that. It's really kind of a lot of great analytics in there, okay? And then I can also go down here and see how specifically um, the episode details. All right, so I get detailed stats too, which is really nice. And it tells me I've had 571 unique plays of this episode since March 26, okay? Great, same, same all numbers on that individual episode. Pretty freaking cool, right? Now, the nice thing, I don't know what the website's doing here, but it also 
allows for me to pull the embed code, a file link for it I can share to anybody. I can see the ad spots that are playing. I can also freeze the ads in that episode as well. So this is what I really love about this. This is the, once I upload it, the episode, they do a lot of that extra work. I can track it there. But the thing that's really the beautiful thing is what they do on my website. They, they log into my WordPress account, get my login, and their VAs, like I said before, will go and transcribe the episode. And they basically will take it and create a blog out of it. All right, so first thing first, where they transcribe it, they're uploading. So here's the one, 431, the 3Fs, flipping assets. They created this infographic, all right? They put this little bit of uh, paragraph there, a little brief description, and you can just see they do this for my episodes, which is pretty cool. What's nice is a nice square image that we can use for marketing, right? Well, if you click on see, read more there, it takes it to the full blog on my website. And like I said, they transcribe all 50, 55 minutes in it. They're putting images in there. Really pretty stinking cool. Now what they also do, if people go through this, they put all the important links, things that I mention inside of that. They also put my LinkedIn and social media links at the bottom of this. They also show how to connect with me. They also, hey, love the show, subscribe, rate, review, and share. Here's how. They got a link to that. They put really great stuff in their name and email. Now, if you, I had a guest on, they would put their headshot and links back to them. So let me go down here to when I had a guest on. Here we go, new mail channel here. So this is helping more guests with the SEO as well. So funny hacks, same thing. They put a link to listen to the, the actual episode there, the whole blog, the questions, and I they show I'm speaking or if Meryl's speaking, pretty freaking cool. And then down at the bottom, important links, they put Meryl's bio and some links to him and his website as well. Okay, you can see, like we have a boot camp that we're doing with Meryl. I'll put a link in there so everybody can go through at one spot. So really cool, all right, love it. That's a beautiful thing. Like I said before, they also send an email out to Meryl, and I'll just share this with you guys as well. And I, I just like um, this stuff here. You know, it just it saves me so much time. All right, so if I needed a headshot for Meryl, there we go. Here we go. And they send this to Meryl. Hey, Meryl, thanks for taking the time to interview Scott Carson. Here's the links to the, the banners, the square images, all this good stuff there. You can copy paste the link there. They put all this stuff in there that is auto populate. I don't create that. And you can see I've had Meryl on a few times because he's a sponsor, okay? It's a really pretty stinking cool thing. And then of course, if I forget something like here, the headshots for the FF guests, Elijah White's and Meryl Chandler, which they should have Meryl already. So I'm just gonna hit reply back to him. Perfect. So they'll go for, oh, yep, we did do that. But that's the thing, they send these emails out on a variety of question and reach out to me real quickly, quickly. But I, that's what I love. It's a really great thing when it comes to, all right. Oh, did I not share? I've been going straight back and forth there. Well, shoot, let's go back here and fix that. <laughs> Sherry, you can see here, let's go back here. By saying they sent an email out to everybody there from our audience. <laughs> there for that, they also go on to my website and then upload it either via blog or podcast. This is the blog. People can click here. <laughs> Just my last. One thing about Zoom, you gotta be careful of. You always gotta hit the like, share screen. And you can see here, they put the square image, they create that, they upload a little short description. All right. Link to the podcast and then the full blog. And down at the bottom, the full blog, links and uh, social media stuff, all right? It's really valuable, they do all that, I don't have to do that. Once I set it up, they do that. Of course, in the podcast here, if you go over here just to podcast, it's just the straight episodes to listen to if they, people wanna do that. And we've got a couple of different podcasts, but they show you know, the most recent episode and links back to the blog too as well, which is pretty freaking cool, okay? But now the thing is, we take what they use, whether it's this image or the horizontal image, okay? 
either the three Fs of flipping assets, the square I mentioned, we upload that to Facebook, or we use the horizontal one to upload it to Instagram or LinkedIn. And my staff runs with that. My staff does a little bit. They take the full transcription, first 4,000, 5,000 characters, and they go back to YouTube, copy paste it into YouTube as a full description to help with our SEO for YouTube. So we're seeing YouTube videos go up. Or um, like Shannon does in my office, she takes this, takes the description, and goes over to LinkedIn, and this has helped us boost stuff as well on LinkedIn. Basically copy, pasting, tweaking a couple things, so it's a little bit different. But if I wanna start a post, or write an article, which is over here, she's already preloaded a bunch of her episodes so we can share a new episode, and you see, you got a draft here. So I can click on drafts, and she's already uploaded these. Look at her, she uploaded these five or six days ago. So like this, Funny and Hacks with Meryl Chandler. So I'll click on that, I can edit. She pulled the image from our podcast, short little paragraph a little bit too, little things. And then, you know, first call paragraphs, and then if we want the link, we can go back there. But that's the beautiful thing about this. Now I can hit publish this, now I can share this. Check out our previous, uh, uh, our previous edit. Boom, so now it's published to LinkedIn and it goes to my profile. Now you should see a second here in a second. It's gonna publish it, it's gonna come ask me if I wanna share it to Facebook. Yeah, let's share it to Facebook, sure. I'm not gonna, I'll just post it to Facebook. I'm not gonna add anything in there right now. You probably should, but I'm just gonna go ahead and post it to Facebook. So it's posted, okay? Same thing, and I'll share it to Twitter. Same thing. Put in hacks, I'll add some text or tweets or uh, hashtags to it as long as I hit tweet. It's tweeted there. Awesome. Oh, and this is a new thing sharing your groups. We'll share this in our LinkedIn groups. This is just some relatively new thing. So I'm a part of different groups. Okay. So it's some real estate. Let's do this distressed real estate investing. We'll click on there. Maybe it's not working quite right there. But anyway, so it gives me some opportunities to share that or message my network. But anyway, that's a beautiful thing. Podtize creates most of that. We just copy paste that across the board for a couple other things, okay? So that's a really cool thing of basically, like I said, we record it, upload it. We go back in and hit a button or two on repurpose.io to upload it to YouTube, okay? So it's getting, they're getting the YouTube juices going. Um, Live Leap has shared it across different Facebook pages, which is really great stuff, right? Um, and that's the that's a nice thing with those two things. Repurpose and Live Leap both share that automatically across the board there. For the most part, we just got to go and hit a few buttons, but it saves us a lot of time. You could have a VA just go in uh, and, and share it and double check a few things, which is what I do. I actually have a VA that goes and shares it. But once you've got the episode uploaded to your website, you got a blog, Take a piece of that blogs and repurposing the same content across LinkedIn, across Twitter, across Facebook, or across Instagram for a variety of reasons. And that's one of the things that uh, Shan does. She goes into, let me share this with you. Make sure to share my screen this time. Goes in a buffer. I go back and connect the page. Let me reconnect the page now. I'll deal with that later. Ah, it's just my luck. I'm Shannon going to do that. She knows that better. So anyway, going back to buffer here. We won't worry about that right now. <laughs> I don't even know my passwords. Staff knows that. So eh, we'll worry about that later. But that, so what Shannon does takes is the same images and she uploads them. She schedules them. Okay. And then also since buffers looked into my Facebook account, it sees the the different posts there. They see different things that we do. Pull the information, can reschedule. But what's great, as you can see, posts. All right. While well, it's working here. Yes, I use, I like uh, Buffer. I can actually automatically pull something if I see something and use it. But you see, like, well, here's one. She's already uploaded this 
to do that went via the web. She pulled an image from the podcast group or she, some of the things that I've posted, she can reshare or like she did this. So Scott talks marketing. So it's shared across our platform. So we use our, my Pinterest account, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, podcast page, all that stuff. She automatically sets that up and we start planning stuff out 30 days out and repurpose what we have coming in. So old videos, maybe from past episodes or old LinkedIn articles that from episodes that we've got, like you showed 75 articles ready to print. We'll just basically hit publish, publish, publish throughout the week and start sharing them. And so that's a really kind of a great thing when it comes to where we're sharing things across the board. So let's go back here and take a quick recap here. So that's the thing. We talked about repurpose. We talked about live leak. We talked about how it uses on my website. And we talked about our production dashboard on Ponetize. And then of course, our staff basically takes and uploads the stuff to buffer.com. We're just resharing the images. If you have the buffer um, plugin, the Google Chrome plugin, it's easy just to hey, share it to buffer and then you pick where it goes. Very easy. And that's basically what I do. So I don't really do any production. Um, Ponetize is the uploading of the website. Uh, live leap and repurpose.io take what we use take the episodes and share that i just have to hit a few buttons buffer.com is pulled um, my you can have a va that pulls that information and then reschedules your buffer.com stuff as well so hopefully this was valuable let's make sure i want to make sure one thing here real fast share screen So I want to make sure and give you my contact information there as well. But what I would love to, so like I said, these are basically the, the six things, five things. I didn't throw YouTube in there because YouTube automatically kind of pulls. Now, the one thing is that Facebook is having an algorithm seizure and I have to share it to Facebook. Facebook obviously won't let me, allow me to download the raw file. That's why I like Zoom because Zoom uh, allows me to download, then I can download it and upload it um, to Facebook as a link or reshare it later on. It saves me that way. The nice thing about Zoom too, and then the reason I like sharing to YouTube or Facebook is it's my backup in case I have a really great episode, but I forget to hit the record button. If I've live streamed it to Facebook or YouTube, at least I have that as a backup. Facebook, I can download. YouTube, I can go and edit the video and reshare the link. But that's the thing that's the hit killer. How many of us have done episodes with great guests and forgot to hit the record button. You can't go back and duplicate. It's not the same thing. So that's, that's why it's like my backup to my backup for the most part. But anyway, if you're interested, if you want some uh, more information on this, would love to talk with me about it. Uh, my email is scott at weclosenotes.com or you can find me all across the social media and things at, at one Scott Carson, Instagram, Twitter, obviously all that stuff. This is my cell phone. Shoot me a text message. Uh, do me a favor. If you really like this, can you do me a huge favor? Uh, go leave me on iTunes, on the Note Close Show podcast, leave me a review. I would just love that. That would make it worthwhile if you found that this video was helpful and some of the things that we shared uh, to help you grow your audience. So like I said, we use Zoom, right? We use Zoom to record, Live Leap automatically shares it across our different Facebook pages, all right? Um, we use Zoom to, to Facebook Live it or YouTube Live. Okay, or just to record if we wanted to do that. But I recommend the backup to the backup and do it live. And then we take the audio to Podetize. They do all, most of the heavy lifting. They give us the great thing. And then my staff basically pulls their info, pulls the photos, pulls their, their blog, and then shares it across our platforms on social media. So it allows for us to replicate a lot of things. Not only are we on the audio with 20 plus different podcasting platforms, we're on video, YouTube and Vimeo, Facebook Live as well. And of course, our, pot, our website blog, our website audio, because that's the thing. We really, really want to drive people back to your website. You don't want to drive them to iTunes. You want to drive them to Buff, uh, uh, Blueberry. You want to drive them to your website so boost your SEO so they see the other things that you're doing, whether it's a workshop or a membership or swag, and that will help you really uh, drive content and really expand your audience because you're hitting them in multiple areas, the audio, the visual, as well, and, and then even the speaking side as well, because with the Facebook and the YouTube, a lot of times I will field questions from the live videos that help add to my episode. So hopefully that was valuable to you. Sorry for the little twitches here and there forgetting to share the screen, but I think I went back and was able to get everything done for you. But great video for you guys to hopefully 
used in what you're doing with your podcast. As always, check it out. Uh, check out the Note Closer Show or check out the website, weclosenotes.com. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye.